那今天最主要的是在谈说，那创意从哪里来？那么当然，我想各位在座的同学一定知道说，创意一定不会来自这个这个脚步，但当然是从头部来的。但是头部的哪里来？这个是我们今天的这个三支影片中间，呃，我们希望透过这三支影片来跟大家介绍，认识你的这个脑是什么结构。创意从哪里来？很多人。谈到的是说哦，是不是心？<咳>因为如果纯粹是脑部的话，那么好像好像有很多东西又不是能够直接这样想就想得出来，所以是不是有心这样的东西？那当然，很多人会想到的是说，那当然是脑吧。那么也有人是说，最重要的是知识，那么更重要的是智慧，那么或者是其他呢？不管是怎么样，这些问题大概我们都需要放在这个，这个我我都不知道要讲说放在脑袋还是放在心里想一想，到底创意来自心，还是来自脑，还是来自知识，还是来自智慧，还是有其他的来源？今天的三支影片大概就尝试的把这些东西都做一个整理。<咳>第一个，我想我们谈到的第一个题目是说。脑为什么不够用？我们通常在做创意的时候，都会觉得是说哇，实在是想不出来，或者是没有感觉。那简单的说，就是你的脑不够用。为什么不够用？我们第一堂课的时候谈到说，现况跟期望之间之间，所有人都希望把现况拉到期望去。那设计就是让现况靠近期望的能力。那么期望会越来越大，现况会越来越竞争，所以越来越竞争跟期望越来越大，这个这样子的中间就产生了一个张力。那么这种张力呢，如果没有办法有能力让它靠近的时候，那么它就会变成是焦虑。如果我们设法去靠近的时候，就是创意。那么，所以设法本身，设法把这个东西往这边拉，这个设法就是创意。所以设法是创意，焦虑是这个字。创意到底是不是靠这个脑？这个是我们今天要谈的一个重点。创意是不是靠这个这个东西？为了谈这个东西呢，我去呃替大家整理了三个字。刚刚说这个脑，这个脑大概都比较了解。看过这个字的举手，我看。这个字读一下，哪一位？那白衣服的同学，你要不要试着猜一下这个字怎么读？脑。有没有别的读法？您呢？脑。这个字读作万，武则天说他读作万。很早很早以前的古字，那你在网络上应该可以找得到为什么他读作万。我们今天就不去解释。不过，万的意思就是说非常非常多的意思。好，武则天在讲这个字的时候，其实就是说非常非常多，很大很大的一个一个数字的意思。它还包括了一种圆满的境界。也是这个字，苏东坡在给人家祝寿的时候写的寿字，中间都藏了一个这样子的一个字在里头，所以表示说这个字呢是一个是一个圆满又庞大的数字的概念。我选这个字跟各位介绍来做什么呢？每一个人有一个脑，脑不够用的时候就变成这样了。这个呢是。一万人共用一个头脑，这个是现在我们在今天的课程里面，我们不只分析一个人一个脑到底是怎么在运作，我们也要跟大家就着前面两堂课来告诉，尤其是上一堂说未来五千天，当世界变成是一个 brain earth 的时候，就是万人一脑。这个万当然不止了，六十几亿人一个脑的意思。所以这个我用了这个字来代表这个概念。就是说
，如果你的脑不够用，你怎么办呢？你的脑不够用的时候，你就要跳到这里来，就是让。一万个人同一个头脑替你做事情，那么这个是一个很重要的东西。也就是说，二十世纪之前，是你在要做创意是靠知识的累积；二十世纪之后的二十一世纪，是靠网络的结合。那么这个力量现在还没有非常非常的明显，可是。趋势是非常明显的，也就是说，从前靠知识的累积这件事情，不是知识不再重要，而是知识的传递的方式完全不一样。它靠的是网络，而且是网络结合。以前一个人一个人努力很难结合，现在靠着网络，它非常容易结合，所以它变成万人一脑是很容易的。但是我在这里特别跟各位呃报告一件事情，就是说。所有的世纪，不管是二十世纪之前、二十世纪之后，所有的世纪，在想到创意的时候，都期待能够跟源头接轨。也就是说，我们每一个人在想一个事情，不管你在解题的是，是爱因斯坦的解科学的问题，或者是这个艺术家在解决他创作的问题，他都期待跟一个源头结合，总是会觉得源头是有一个、有一个、有一个答案在那里。所以，那个、那个要跑到那个答案去的。力量很大，所以那种力量很大又到不了的时候，才会有反这个这个东西。我们今天的三支影片会慢慢的跟这个事情，让大家去了解说，哦，这些呃，这个非常有思想跟非常有经验的人，他们怎么样子解决这个问题？重点是说，那源头在哪里？你去哪里找这个源头？这个是在二零零六年的一本《时代》杂志的封面，他谈到的是这个问题。那我们今天不是要谈这个问题，但是我们想谈的是说，当每一个人在想要追溯源头到底在哪里，我怎么样子能够因为了解源头而变得更有创意的时候，有一种说法是说，所有的文明的发展都是演化来的。另外一种说法是神的设计，也就是这一边还是这一边呢？这个是一个 evolution wars， 这个是已经谈了很久很久了，但是还在继续。我们不去说它到底哪一边才是正确，因为本来也没有人知道哪一边是真正是正确。但是重点是，我们为了要追溯源头，说，哎，为我怎么样子能够找到那个创意的源头的时候呢？有的人会开始从这种方向去，这个是这个 Mars， Mars 是火星吧？火星的一个照片，他在一九七几年的时候去拍拍到的照片。那么，我想很多人大概都看过这张照片，是说火星上有一个脸，那是不是要跟我们有什么样的讯息？所以。我们就会觉得是说，那这种创意的源头是不是更高文明的设计呢？甚至有的人追追求到了没有什么别的办法，就去想一些怪招。那么这个 stairways to heaven， 我想这个是一个老歌，各位也许不见得听过，但是。我为什么举这个这首歌来呢？这首歌等一下我们在其中一个影片会听到，就是偏执，就是有的人认为是说，这个设计是隐藏在一种什么密码里面。那待会儿我们听到的这首歌呢，他们把它反过来放，变成也有歌词，也就是说，明明是到天堂的楼梯，天堂的梯阶，它反过来放的时候变成一直在歌颂撒旦。所以他们就觉得说，哦，原来还有密码藏在里面。那么这种就是一种已经创意想到没办法，就想说我要不要把这种东西倒过来？我要不要把什么东西这样这个随便弄的方法？那么这样子的一个的这个找寻找创意源头的方法呢？当然，呃，等一下我们可以讨论说大家的看法是怎么样。那当然在影片里面我们也可以看到他怎么样把它正的唱反的唱是什么意思。所以，如果你用这样子的方法去找，你天堂也会变成地狱。所以
这个 stairways to heaven 变成是一个歌颂撒旦的一个歌。第一支影片要介绍的是这个 Michael Michael Shermer， 他讲的一句话是说：如果你没有很好的科学的基础，那么一个不完整的资讯。就会被很有力的跟这种呃猜测或者是呃引导去把你连接在一起。那这是什么意思呢？就是说你在火星上看到一个石头，你觉得那是一张脸。那听起来像不像我们在什么什么灰里面看到出现什么数字？说哦，那个数字我可以去买什么什么签大家乐。那样子的，现在不签大家，现在签什么东西？啊？乐透。乐透，哎。所以，这样子的一个概念就是说，如果你没有一个 sound science 很好的科学的基础，所有的情，你得到的资讯，尤其是现在网络上的资讯如此的快速，你拿到一张照片，你甚至在一张什么东西上面看到的，到一一点点。模糊的情报，你都把它拿来当成是一个 power of suggestion， 这个是重要的概念。所以这也就让我想起来说，一个人如果脑袋这么小，那他看到这样子的东西的时候，他就想到：天哪、啊，外星人的暗示啊！那其实到目前为止。大部分的这个东西都是有人做的，而且谁做的都还得过奖，所以这样子的一个事情，就是我们想在寻找创意源头，说，哎，我的脑袋不够用，所以我到处去乱抓，但是乱抓的时候呢，有哪一些事情你必须要注意的？那我们来看第一支影片，就是这个，呃，专专业的怀疑论者，这个 Michael Shermer， 那他谈到说，为什么人会去？相信这些奇怪的事情，所以我们来看看他说什么。这位先生是一个杂志的这个出版者，他的杂志呢，就是在怀疑所有的事情。比如说，很多人那时候网络上不是在流行，呃，九一一是呃美国故意把那栋这个双子星大楼炸掉，那以便能够发动。供给吗？那那时候网络传来传去，传来传去，传的好像真的一样。他特别去找了这个工程师去研究说，哦，这个这样子的的爆炸不可能造成这个房子垮下来，是飞机炸的等等。那么这个人是说起来是一个实在是很好管闲事的人，所以我们来看看他对于这个科学跟创意之间的关系。Michael Shermer, the director of the Skeptic Society, the publisher of Skeptic Magazine. We investigate claims of the paranormal, pseudoscience, and fringe groups, and cults, and claims of all kinds between <laughs> science and pseudoscience, and non-science, junk science, voodoo science, pathological science, bad science, non-science, and plain old nonsense. And unless you've been on Mars recently, you know there's a lot of that out there. Some people call us debunkers, which is kind of a negative term, but let's face it, there's a lot of bunk. And we are like the bunko squads of the police departments out there flushing out. Well, we're sort of like the Ralph Nader's of bad ideas, <laughs> trying to replace bad ideas with good ideas. I'll show you an example of a bad idea. I brought this with me. This was、uh, given to us by NBC Dateline to test. It's the.、Uh, it's produced by the Quadro Corporation of West Virginia. It's called the Quadro 2000 Dowser Rod. <laughs> This was being sold to high school administrators for $900 a piece. It's a piece of plastic with a Radio Shack antenna attached to it. You can douse for all sorts of things, but this particular one was built to douse for marijuana in students' lockers. <laughs> so the way it works is you go down the hallway and you see if it tilts toward a particular locker, and then you open the locker. So it looks something like this. I'll show you. And it, oh, it, well, it has kind of a right-leaning bias, so I'll show you. Well, this is science, so we'll do a controlled experiment. It'll go this way for sure. 
<laughs> sir, you want to empty your pockets, please, sir? <laughs> So the question was, can it, can it actually find marijuana in students' lockers? And the answer is, if you open enough of them, yes. <laughs> but in science, we have to keep track of the misses, not just the hits. And that's probably the key lesson to my short talk here is that um, this is how psychics... He said the key point is that in science, the important thing is to keep the failed things, not just the successful part. 那他说，这个科学跟通灵占星最大的不同，就是说，你如果是在讲这种通灵，偶尔不小心弄对一次，你就觉得它很灵。可是科学是说，如果你弄了一百次只对了一次，那个叫做不对的啊。所以我想，这个这件事情呢，是在呃，为什么我把它排在第一个来说呢？就是说，所有的创意在我们。思考的时候，必须要去思考这些创意的科学基础是不是站得住脚。Work astrologers and tarot card readers and so on. People remember the hits, they forget the misses. In science, we have to keep the whole database and look to see if the number of hits is somehow stands out from the total number that you would expect by chance. In this case, we tested it. We had two opaque boxes, one with government-approved THC marijuana and one with nothing, and it got it 50 percent of the time. Which is exactly what you'd expect with a coin flip model. So that's just kind of a fun little example here of uh, the sorts of things we do. Skeptic is the quarterly publication. Each one has a particular theme. Like this one is on the future of intelligence. Are people getting smarter or dumber? I have an opinion of this myself because the business I'm in. But in fact, people, it turns out, are getting smarter. Three, three IQ points um, per, per 10 years going up. Sort of an interesting thing. With science, don't think of skepticism as a thing, or even science as a thing. Are science and religion compatible? It's like, is science and plumbing compatible? These, they're just two different things. Science is not a thing, it's a verb. It's a way of thinking about things. It's a way of looking for natural explanations for all phenomena. I mean, what's more likely that that extraterrestrial intelligences or multidimensional beings travel across the vast distances of interstellar space to leave a crop circle in Farmer Bob's field and pucker brush Kansas to promote skeptic.com or webpage? Or is it more likely that a reader of Skeptic did this with Photoshop? And in all cases, we have to ask, <laughs> what's the more likely explanation? And before we say something is out of this world, we should first make sure that it's not in this world. What's more likely, that Arnold had a little extraterrestrial help in his run for the governorship, or that the World Weekly News makes stuff up? <laughs> And part of that, the same theme, is expressed nicely here in the Sidney Harris cartoon. For those of you in the back, it says here, then a miracle occurs. I think you need to be more explicit here in step two. This single slide completely dismantles the intelligent design arguments. There's nothing more to it than that. You can say a miracle occurs. It's just that it doesn't explain anything. It doesn't offer anything. There's nothing to test. It's the end of the conversation for intelligent design. 刚刚的那一张幻灯片，就是卡通化的那一张，他要跟大家说的是说，这边有一个数学城市，那边有个数学城市，很复杂，不知道怎么解过去。他在中间的解法是写说奇迹发生了，所以他的意思就是说，如果你是说用奇迹发生了来解决这一类的问题，那你就是准不准备跟人家讲话了，就是你就用奇迹发生了就可以解决，所以，呃。这个在创意上是一样的。Uh, creationists, whereas, and, and it's true, scientists sometimes throw terms out as linguistic place fillers, dark energy or dark matter or something like that. Until we figure out what it is, we'll just call it this. It's the beginning of the causal chain for science. For intelligent design creationists, it's the end of the chain. So again, we can ask this, what's more likely? Are UFOs, alien spaceships, or perceptual cognitive mistakes, or even fakes? This is a UFO shot from my house in Altadena, California, uh, looking down over Pasadena. And if it looks a lot like a Buick hubcap, it's because it is. <laughs> uh, you don't even need Photoshop. You don't need high-tech equipment. You don't need computers. This was shot with a uh, throwaway Kodak Instamatic camera. You just have somebody off on the side with a hubcap, ready to go, cameras ready, that's it. <laughs> So although it's possible that most of these things are fake or illusions or, or so on, and that some of them are real, it's more likely that all of them are fake, like the crop circles. On a more serious note, in all of science, we're looking for a balance between uh, data and theory. In the case of, of, of Galileo, he had uh, two problems when he turned his telescope to Saturn. 
Uh, first of all, there was no theory of planetary rings, and second of all, his data was grainy and fuzzy, and he couldn't quite make out what it was he was looking at. So he wrote that he has seen, I have observed that the furthest planet has three bodies, and this is what he, he ended up concluding that he saw. So without a theory of planet... Chili 那个时候望远镜不够好他就开始观察那里有一个什么东西这个经验是很重要的一个给我们的例子。这个经验是很重要的一个给我们的例子。uh, the solar system operated, and then he had better telescopic, more fine-grained data in which he could figure out that as the Earth is going around faster according to Kepler's laws than Saturn, then we catch up with it and we see the angles of the rings at different, uh, different angles there, and that's in fact turns out to be true. The, the problems with having a theory is that your theory may be loaded with cognitive biases. So one of the problems of explaining why people believe weird things is that we have things on a simple level, and then I'll go to more serious ones, like um, we have a tendency to see faces. This is the face on Mars, which was uh, in 1976, so there was a whole movement to get NASA to photograph uh, that area because People thought this was monumental architecture made by Martians. Well, it turns out here's the close-up of it from 2001. If you squint, you can still see the face. And when you're squinting, what you're doing is you're turning that from fine grain to coarse grain. And so you're reducing the quality of your data. And if I didn't tell you what to look for, you'd still see the face because we're programmed by evolution to see faces. Faces are important for us socially. And of course, happy faces, faces of all kinds are easy to see. You can see the happy face on Mars there. If astronomers were frogs, perhaps they'd see Kermit the Frog. Do you see him there? <laughs> Little froggy legs. Or if geologists were elephants. Uh, religious, I uh, religious iconography. <laughs> discovered by a Tennessee baker in 1996. He charged five bucks a head to come see the nun bun until he got a, a cease and desist from Mother Teresa's lawyer. Here's Our Lady of Guadalupe and Our Lady of Watsonville, just down the street, or is it up the street from here? Uh, tree bark is particularly good because it's nice and grainy, branchy, uh, black and white, splotchy, and you can get the pattern-seeking, humans are pattern-seeking animals. Here's the Virgin Mary on the side of a glass window in Sao Paulo. Uh, here's the Virgin Mary made her appearance on a cheese sandwich, which I got to actually hold in a, a Las Vegas casino, of course, this being America. <laughs> This casino paid $28,500 on eBay for the, for the uh, cheese sandwich. But who does it really look like? The Virgin Mary? It has that sort of puckered lips, uh, 1940s era look. Virgin Mary in Clearwater, Florida. I actually went to see this one. Um, there was a lot of pe people there of the faithful come to be in there. Um, 
wheelchairs and crutches and so on. And uh, we went down and investigated. This to give you a size that's Dawkins, me, and the amazing Randy next to this two, two and a half story size image. All these candles, so many thousands of candles people had lit in tribute to this. So we walked around the backside just to see what was going on here. Where it turns out wherever there's a sprinkler head and a palm tree, you get the effect. Here's the Virgin Mary on the backside, which they started to wipe off. I guess you can only have one miracle per building. <laughs> So is it really a miracle of Mary, or is it a miracle of Marge? <laughs> and then I'm going to finish up with um, another example of this uh, uh, with audio, uh, auditory illusions. Um, there's this, this film, White Noise, with, with Michael Keaton about the, the dead talking back to us. Uh, by the way, this whole business of talking to the dead, it's not that big a deal. Anybody can do it. Turns out it's getting the dead to talk back. That's the really <laughs> hard part. In this case, um, supposedly, uh, these messages are hidden in electronic phenomenon. There's a reversespeech.com webpage in which I downloaded this stuff. Here is the forward, this is the most famous one of all of these. Here's the forward version of the very famous song. If there's a button in your hedgerow, don't be alone there. It's just a sprinkly for the main queen. Yes, there Can you just listen to that all day? <laughs> all right, here it is backwards, and see if you can hear the hidden messages that are supposedly in there. What'd you get? Satan. Satan. Okay, well, at least we got Satan. Now, I will prime your auditory part of your brain to tell you what you're supposed to hear and then hear it again. <laughs> I can't miss it when I tell you what's there. <笑>這個方式這個方式是在做創意的時候很許多的廣告用同樣的方法暗示的方法就是你其實是沒有那樣子的一個概念但是它暗示你有的時候你再去看的時候你會變成有那麼那樣子的東西呢事實上是當然不
Um, we know exactly how, f how old, the, how far from the edge, we, you know, it's 12, it's 13.7 billion light years, and it's not a guess. We know within a precise error bars there uh, how close it is, and so we can say, although not absolutely true, that it's pretty close to being true. And uh, to his credit, Katie called him up after this op-ed piece came out and said, I'm so embarrassed, I was a member of the astronomy club, and I should have known better, and she recut the song, so I will end with the new version. We are 13.7 billion miles from the edge of the observable universe. That's a good estimate with well-defined error bars. And with the available information, I predict that I will always be with you. Cool is that? Well,这一段呢，很明显的是希望让我们了解是说，虽然科学是很重要的东西，但是当你把它做的太准的时候，很多东西就变得不好看啊。所以在创意里头，难就是难在你如何在精确中间掌握模糊。那在精确中间掌握模糊，以及像伽利略一样，在模糊之中掌握精确，这个是创意的高难度的动作。那这也是今天我用这个第一个影片呢，想要跟大家分享。所以想要请您思考的一个问题，看完这影片，好奇就像
各位同学讨论的就是说，为什么人会想要一开始去相信，而不会一开始去怀疑？我希望各位同学可以真正去思考一下，是说，连我们自己，其实我自己就讲我自己好了。当我看到第一次看到那个麦田的时候，我真的，我我把它讲得很仔细哈，我真的很怎么样？哦，好。就是我第一次看到麦田的时候，虽然有那么多的科学的训练，可是感情上面，我真的很希望他是外星人来做的。懂不懂我在讲的意思？意思是说，如果他不是外星人做的，只是我们有一些人在开玩笑做的时候，我就会觉得说，哇，好可惜，又失去一个机会，跟外星人握握手的机会，就是那个意思。因为我们很希望，在这个人类所以可以控制的范围以以外，再去找到一些什么，那那那个事情呢，让我们去相信很多这个其实说穿了根本没有什么的事情。那所以迷信也是因为这样来的哈，所以呃，先谈到这里。